Okay, uh, we got more Final Fantasy VIII today. We've got some end game cleanup stuff to do. We're gonna get Doom Train, which involves me getting some steel pipes. I think that's my last GF. I might try to make um, Squall's ultimate weapon. And then from there, we'll try to go to. Uh, towards the end. I think this is good. So. Make sure I have no encounters back on, or I'm going to be very sad if I get back attacked by a Malboro. Okay, it's on. I'm going to check all the draw points on these islands real quick. There's a ton of them. Aura is nice. Get more of those. I wish it helped you track the ones that you already got. Like I wish they appeared on the map once you drew them once, you know. Zell has Ultima as well. That's quite nice. Might have this island tapped out. There's Quake. Such an odd mechanic to have draw points on the world map. I think these islands are only accessible with the Ragnarok too, which you'd like barely have for any time at all. Come on. Point map for these islands are insane. Lines and text everywhere. It's funny. Uh, I guess this is the wrong island, isn't it? Uh, just this one here at Archipelago. So another island like across from it, maybe? This one, maybe? Hey, Aki, well, I got you. I need to get steel pipes. Uh, what's probably my best bet for farming them? I think last episode I was talking about doing the Wendigos in the forest nearby, but it's probably a better location for them. Don't think they drop in the Estar area at all. I really need on the world map. I'm just kind of flying around to the different continents here. It's really shocking how empty this game is. Given how, like, full the first continent is, right? There's a good amount of stuff there on disc one, and you go to all these other places, and there's, like, one location. Timber Forest with a lake in Galbadia. Okay. Thanks. Check here. So it's just the forest over here by timber. Maybe one of these ones over here. Taking counter none back off. I assume I can mug them. Save really quick just in case. A level scaled Wendigo kills me for some stupid reason. It can happen. The camera's gotta calm down there. See if I can get a strength up ability on one of Zell's GF. Everyone can have max damage. Hey, Serp, how you doing? So 
this Rochefall Forest, which counts as Timber Forest, I assume? No, oh, it says that's a canyon. So maybe not. Dang it. Thanks, Odin. Appreciate that, friend. Feather. It's Obel Lake. Doesn't show as being timber forest. Steel pipe, Final Fantasy VIII. It's the same enemy from last time. Locations, timber region, forests. Oh, maybe we're okay here then. Let's have to wait for it to spawn. Just confirm that Doom Train's my last GF. It is. That's cool. There's one. All right. Oh, I'm just gonna try and mug it. I think it drops them too, but... Odin, you gotta calm down. I get it. I appreciate it. You're trying. I think this is the most broken I've ever gotten in a game uh, played on stream. Drop steel orbs. Maybe I have a better chance of getting them if I mug him. Let's see. Oh yeah, it looks like you always get steel pipes. Okay. So I need to fight at least two Wendigos and mug them. And not have Odin show up. What governs Odin's spawn chance? I thought it was like a like a 5% chance. And it could still be a 5% chance, right? So this happened in like Three out of the last four battles. It's on Tetsu Ken. It's a straight one in ten, not one in twenty. You review what abilities everybody's learning here. Mad Rush potentially unlocks some other stuff. Hey, Dana, how you doing? Pick up boost for everybody. Luck Junction would be nice. Another source of mug would be nice. Should have picked that up while I was getting millions of AP in the uh, underwater research facility earlier. At some point when Andrea is watching, we need to see all the summon animations because I barely summoned it all in this playthrough. Which is like very odd for me. When I was a young gamer in these Final Fantasy games, I was hyper dependent on summons. Wrong one. 
God, the level scaling in this game is so weird, too. It's like... It would be one thing if all the enemies globally scaled in level as you progress through the game at about the same rate. But you get these weird experiences where you're, like, fighting an enemy on the island of heaven and hell. Island closest to hell or whatever. And... Uh, you hit it once and it dies for $99.99. And then you fight these anacondors from the timber forest. And I guess they randomly roll to be like 10 levels higher than you. So now they require multiple hits. It's weird. It's like, I wonder if they tested the level scaling or they just kind of implemented it after the fact. If the game was originally set up without it and they added it late in development and didn't get a chance to see how it felt. The combat math in this game feels like a... Uh, an RPG Maker game, like an amateurish one. Because, like, getting your combat math to balance if you've ever fucked around in RPG Maker is extraordinarily difficult without some kind of level scaling system on top of it, right? I think this game is still fun, it's just weird how broken it is. And it sounds like the answer is this game just came out so fast after Final Fantasy VII that it, it couldn't have gotten the same amount of mechanical TLC that 7, 9, and 10 got. Need Zan Tetsuken or Zan Tetsuken to not trigger the next time I run into a Wendigo. I just learned a bunch of boosts. Block J. Never gonna use that, but it might unlock other cool things. Same with Revive. Come on, Wendigo. Nope. You guys the low health variety or the insanely high health variety? Shotgun ammo might be the way to go for these random battles. I'll take 10 dragon skins. Is it Eden that learned Mad Rush there? Okay, let's do... Dark Side, I guess. I don't even remember what that does, to be honest. Um, out of curiosity, do I have any of the cards that make steel pipes? Steel orb. Yeah, just the one from Elastoid. I only have the one Elastoid card. Okay. Here's one. No Odin. No whammies. Oh my god. I don't even think he can drop steel pipes, can he? It's an uncommon drop. At best. Stop it, Odin. That's enough. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Oh, orbs. Come on, games. Last thing I need for the last GF.
Do multiple GFs naturally learn counter? Like multiple learn mug? Or do you have to teach counter if you want to have more than one copy of it? Come on, game. Give me a Wendigo. I need two of them total. No Odin. Anything related to haste are two things I've always prioritized in Final Fantasy games. Things that let you do damage more often than the default one per normal and hasted turn, right? This counter can backfire a bit in games like this where you can junction an element to your weapon. It's not always upshot. seems particularly strong in this one because it always procs. Give me a Wendigo. Pretty soon here I'm gonna like recognize the camera angle. cancel out of that early. Wendigo! Let's do it. wonder if you can encounter more than one of these guys at once. Okay, no Odin! Oh my god! Stop it! Final Fantasy VIII! How long has it been since I started this? Okay, 20 minutes. What is happening? It's three times! What the fuck? I need to turn Odin off. Strength Love. Which is a... More common drop than steel pipes, depending on what level the Wendigo was. I know, right? Shouldn't go outside in the next thunderstorm. Place their honor vine. I'm looking at the drop table here.
I guess I'd rather just, because if you mug him, you just get it most of the time, it looks like. I'm starting to wonder if it makes more sense for me to try to fight the last dudes. Well, I need to have mugs still, so hold on. Okay, no Odin. This is number four. Okay, he struck first, so no Odin. Thanks, game. Oh, also, don't hit Squall and make him counterattack and one-shot you. Because of course he would one-shot you after all this. Don't! Thank God. Four steel pipes. Okay. So you need to get one more encounter where Odin doesn't spawn. Let's, uh, unequip, I guess I could just leave Selfie dead. Unequip counter really quick. How effective is rare item? I don't want to use it here, but I'm just curious. Selfie tied for those steel pipes, I know, right? One more, let's go. Or I can go get one elastic card and card my both of them. Whoa, that's weird. It makes it so you can't get the rarest thing? It sounds like it's the opposite of what it's described as being, then. I'm meeting you, right? All right, while I'm doing this, let me look up Lionheart. I have the pulse ammo, which I think is the hardest, most annoying thing to get. That's why I just want to equip counter. Had the vision of that happening. Adamantine, Dragon Fang, Pulse Ammo. Oh, Od Odin's almost certainly going to happen again. So far, it's only been happening on uh, Wendigo spawns for some reason. I don't think I've got dragon fangs. I think I've got some other dragon thing. Oh, does Ochu Dance make it so that I can't, uh... Do limit breaks? Hey, Game Android, how you doing? Check really quick. Um, was Dragon Fang four of them? I have Inferno Fangs and Dragon Skin, but I need Dragon Fang separately. Grendels are in the canyon forest nearby. I'm gonna want to use level down. Let me make sure. 
Tonberry just has that. I didn't have to spend any points on locking it, right? I'll go grab um, Doom Train before we finish this. The sound just makes me so sad as soon as I hear it. Oh, good. Because statistics work this way, I'm blowing an Odin proc on an enemy I don't care about. That man team can be stolen from BGH 215F2 for Adamantois. Stolen from a boss, so I should have mugged him forever ago. We're gonna drop some Metaman places. Basically, constantly at high level. Don't, no Odin, no Odin. Thank you, game. There we go, we're done. I was already getting in that mode of like, this is never going to happen, right? Seriously? That Mantoy spawns in the, the beach near Ducklet? Alright, so I don't actually remember how this works. I think you just go to Estar and you use Solomon's Ring. with those items in your inventory. I don't think you have to go to like Tears Point or something. But I might be wrong about that. You can use the ring anywhere with the items. Oh, okay, I thought it was Aster specifically. You have to fight it like Diablos, right? You just get it. You called upon me? I am Doom Train. Suplex you. I shall become your ally. It's so odd. Okay. Wow, it's such a lower level. Forbidden Medicine Refine. Status Defense Junction times four. Auto Shell. A lot of cool stuff, basically. Get the shop stuff. Sazel and Jupiter. What junctions does Doom Train have at default? Anything interesting? Oh, no stats, just elemental attack, status attack. So I think they're all already covered on that, but I'll check really quick. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Matters who summons it, I guess. That is the last GF, yep. So you don't want to keep this off for now. So, does auto protect also make it so that? Uh, protect is always on, or does it still wear off like a normal cast? And I assume this game doesn't have auto haste at all. I got one more end game cleanup thing to get, and it's the Lionheart for Squall, and then we should be good to go after that. That's pretty good then. Right on. Auto haste. Okay, it's only learned, so no GFs have it by default. Is it really difficult to get uh, accelerators or like a card that descends into it easily? Don't look. 
Oh wow, that's crazy. Could've gotten three of them in the first disc, you said? <laughs> what, drop it on? I appreciate it, man. They're out there with gumption or something. I might actually have a better chance on the S Star Beach near Centra, but I'll do a couple kills here. memories of running along beaches outside Valon Garden. I don't remember if there's a particular enemy there that's good to card mod or something. Oh no, not these things. Fastitoclin F? Maybe you call them amnesia. There we go. We established that the special he does doesn't care about how many R1s I hit, right? So I can't like force it to not do an animation. Irvine's the speedrunner friendly. Tells you when the enemy's out of health, you can cancel out of it partly through. Hits all enemies. There's a fairly fast animation. I will do two more battles here before I try the other beach. I don't know how many I have to kill here. It's a different sound. Hey! Well, least threatening looking at a man choices in any Final Fantasy. Or Halkins. Oh, well, shit. Interesting. Mug will always do that. Okay, so I should have just killed them. It was my bad. Defense apparently, though. Just show me their status weaknesses. I wonder if they're. Oh, they're immune to everything that would kill them quickly. Okay. Don't cast a white wind. I guess I'll tell you how much health you have left. Two shots should do it. Oh, I wonder why it showed 99.99 the second time. I guess it only shows zero after their health is depleted, but it won't do damage equal to their health. Just kill them. 
not mug them. I might have a better chance in the Estar beaches. It's not gonna bother anymore. I guess I just don't know whether the encounters are all equally likely to happen. Yeah, because Estar beaches have two Adamantois encounters and three fast Takalin encounters. Or however you're supposed to pronounce that. I feel like uh, some of these elemental junctions are a liability. So things are weak against wind. Beach should only have double Edamantois and the Festido guys. And they should always drop the Edamantine at level 30 plus. So in theory, I only need to get in two battles where it's fine if Odin shows up. How do you get the Kiros card, Akim? chance. That's a new sound effect. There we go. Hey guys. Come on, Odin. Now I need you. Yay! He listened. Lose the Minimog card to the Queen of Cards, follow her to Dollar, talk to her artist's father, one of the people in the market- Oh my god. That's insane. I wonder if any player has done that on accident. That's like some borderline Zodiac Spear shit. There's two. Oh wow, that gives you Vit plus 60%. That actually seems pretty good. I might want some of those anyway. Dollar is random, so winning the card back is really annoying. game in the last 31 hours or so it definitely makes me feel differently than a lot of other games that either feel unfinished or unpolished or imperfect hey wow now odin's helping out 
I think what I've landed on is that this is the most polished, unpolished game I've ever played, if that makes sense. Like, it's only on four or five playthroughs that I'm like, wait, what happened here? <laughs> like, because the cutscenes are all gorgeous and the game is very playable. There are no, like, obvious bugs. It's not glitchy. It's not pants on head stupid like Metroid Other M. Um, it's not lazy like Resident Evil 6. And it's not broken like Sonic 06. It's like they had a polish phase, but it was interesting what they chose to spend that time on. I mean, it has a crazy high Metacritic, right? Like, I guess that's probably just because the critics played through disc one, which is completely solid and fine. All right, so those are my adamantines. I now need dragon fangs. Which I think we said were Grendels. I need it again. Uncommon from... Ooh, uncommon drop. Yikes, is there an easier way for me to get them? Because that sounds like that sucks. Four dragon fangs. Oh, I only needed the one adamantine, so I guess I have enough vit plus 60% to put on all three characters now. That was a mistake, but it wasn't very costly in terms of time, at least. Monsters which drop. Blue dragon, maybe? The low-level Grendels are a 65% chance to drop them. It's not too bad. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Hey, thanks, Scarf. That's so weird, though. Forest near the cliffs of Galbadia. Thanks. Appreciate that. I don't know if this counts. Remasters range lower. Interesting. Such a goopy attack. What? He turns Squall into a dodgeball or a racquetball or something. Works between the glyphs near Galdadio Garden. Okay. So, this really important endgame item, the dragon thing, for some reason, drops from very low level Grendels. That's so weird. Who has Tonberry right now? Irvine. Oh right, it's one of these abilities which I haven't touched the whole game. I might have to hug the cliff, really. But Vedia Garden doesn't have an entry anymore, does it? They also spawn in Windhill, top cliffs. Let's try that. On these cliffs to have the uh, the Ragnarok. Win 
Hill Bluffs. Yeah, I fought these things before. So you drop a very rare and important item. But only at their lowest level for some reason. Makes you wonder if a human even did the uh, the drop tables in this game, or they just like assign them randomly. Some of them are clearly odd, like adamantines dropping from adamantoys to this food. Are you still alive when your level's at low? Level 19 and lower is the highest chance. What's the level range that they can roll based on my party's average level? It's like plus or minus 15 by default. Dragon fin, dragon skin. So we're like... Average of 80-ish. They're the only things that can spawn here, so that should make this fairly painless. Well, I got an obscene amount of levels completely accidentally trying to track back to a save point in the underwater research facility. I went from like level 22 to level 90 which is one of the highest levels I've ever gotten in a Final Fantasy game, I think. Level down, always bring their level down by a fixed like percentage, like gravity. Hey, thanks, Yukapo. How you doing? I guess I can tell what their level is by what their draws are, right? Maybe not. Halves their level. Oh, so if it's dropping it by 50 first, that means they're starting at 99. That might be the lowest tier if it's Fire Blizzard double. What's it doing? We got Doom Train. Trying to get Lionheart, and then we're gonna push through after that. Need four Dragon Fangs. There's one. Let's do that three more times. I guess I don't need to have low health here because they're going to be so low level that they're just going to die instantly. Does, um... Does level down work on everything in this game, or are there bosses that are immune to it? generously in the original novelty of the graphics. Yeah. I'm guessing few of them finish the game before reviewing it. Bosses in Illinois are immune. Okay.
It needs to say level down by 19, or draw needs to show the appropriate level. I think that's right. Yeah, okay, so if they have the shittiest draws, then it's, I'm good to kill it, basically. Got it. Hey, wow. That was a... That's a very rare drop. Dang. Well, that's exciting. Thanks, game. Hard time trusting reviews after 96. We kind of gotten into a realm where it's impossible for a game to get a 95 or higher, and extremely unlikely for it to get a 90 to a 95. Like the modern day. Aggregators are generally going to include uh, people that are naysaying just to naysay, right? I think I'm actually in the opposite position. I guess I can't trust the absolute value over review, because obviously you can't. It's like, good games rest in the space between a 75 and a 95, which it's not how a scale from 0 to 100 works. But the relative quality of games in that tight space of like 75 to 90, I find is pretty accurate for the games we've played over the last five years or so. Obviously, it's not perfect, but you tell me this game has a 76 on Metacritic. I know a lot about it right away, provided it was released after, like, year 2000. Yeah, a 65 is basically a zero, absolutely. You're not wrong. For every moment of breathtaking delight, there are a dozen predictable endless battle sequences. 90. <laughs> that was before JRPG fatigue too, right? That's part of it. Hey, there's our last dragon thing. I think I already have the shock ability. Which is so super unnecessary. Lionheart. Yes. Brad. Oh, do I have enough to make the air guys too? Just coincidentally? <laughs> sure. Why not? Isn't that the name of a... Wasn't there a, a square game called that? What's his final one? Is It's not the Exeter, right? Uh, ultimate Irvine weapon. The Exeter. Dino Bone times two. I only have one. Oh, so I have everything except one Dino Bone. I think I can fix that. Armadodo. Sweet! Everyone has their ultimate weapon. Cool. Which is separate from Einhander, which was a uh, side-scrolling space shooter. Okay, um, I've got everything I want, so I'm just gonna push the story now. I can't think of anything else that's particularly impactful that's remaining to do. I've already got the necessary cards. The Gilgamesh card will let me beat Omega Weapon. Who's going to be a little bit harder than I probably remember him being since I'm like level 90. But I think it should still be okay. Uh, we're going to go to Estar. Yeah, I wish Metacritic would stretch so that a 65 is an actual D and not like a zero.
Very excited for Golden Tip 3, absolutely. How are you doing? Rewatching Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey. Andrew hasn't seen Bogus Journey. Let's do that this week. It's just over S star now. We're supposed to go to Lunatic Pandora. Let me check out Tears Plane. Did you see the Red Letter Media review of Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey DPs? It's really good. Oh, there it is. Hey! It's that big old friend. and failed to beat Omega as a kid. The big thing that breaks Omega is the uh, the Holy Wars from the Gilgamesh card. They just make the party invincible. I'm shocked they're even in the game. It's probably the most powerful defensive thing in any Final Fantasy. Turn on uh, no encounters again after this. He can heal himself. It's funny. I'm trying to get Renzo Kukin back. I think it's going to be more of a pain than to just kill him. frustrating. So I didn't actually look into it. It's going to be available for streaming tomorrow, DPs. They're not doing the Wonder Woman only in theaters crap. Not complaining about drawing makes sense if they're just considering drawing in the first disc. It doesn't really break until you get these endgame spells that are just completely pants on head silly. Alright, so we want... I'm leave Auto Protect, actually. Counter now. I have to go talk to Laguna. Story suggests they at least got to the record. Interesting. Not to Balam Garden. It might be a hindsight bias thing that I'm not remembering what this game is like without junctioning crazy spells all over the place. Oh yeah, this is a separate location. Sorcerer's Monument or whatever. Stop. That is enough. 
Alright, so I have an empty space. A comrade? Oh, Renoa! <laughs> right, right. They took her away, and then your party was like, You should go! How dare you, Squall? You suck! You're just gonna leave her be? And then I was like, Yeah, I am. I'm gonna go do several hours of side questing. <laughs> I did completely forget about her. I was like, we're supposed to go to like Lunatic Pandora or something? It's the GFs. Too many GFs. And we think that like JoJo pose is them like fixing their glasses. Better watch out, Zell's got fists. So like I like the set piece here. They're trying to put her in that one of those crazy satellite coffins like Adele was in. I'd love to know more about the satellite coffins. Oh man, was this the original image? It's like Sephiroth cutting Genova free. Graphics. A sorceress. I don't care. How the soldier secures. Like, oh, you want to see your friend off? That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> like we may have originally had a sequence here where you had to like break in that band. Oh, is that Ward? He's silent. That's cool. I've seen him before. What's wrong, Renoa? Just a little embarrassed. Why ever for? In my mind, they're cut off Jenkos, and he's got pockets that can fit two liter bottles in them. Whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a TV show that got canceled and had to wrap up all of its plot lines really fast in like the last couple episodes. That kind of happens in Adventure Time, where they were planning for like three more seasons of content and I'm like at one. We can't let that sorceress from the future mess up our world, you tell them so. Can we go to that orphanage? Head to Adia's house. No, you took Pandora, skirts the line between badass and ridiculous. Yeah, I like it. I like all the names of stuff and all the set pieces. I guess I just have to develop a headcanon of, like, what would Final Fantasy VIII been if they had spent more time in discs 2, 3, and 4 on fleshing things out and adding more connective tissue. I think that's the more mature take I was hoping for when we started streaming it from my old grumpy teenage me hot take of Final Fantasy VIII sucks. 
<laughs> it's the worst. Well, no, it doesn't suck. Just, it's, uh... It's too polished to ever get a What Happened episode. Hey, thanks, Angelo. I would not have known this was here. Yeah, but Game of Thrones, so that works, but I guess it has a bad faith problem where, like, the writers were actively trying to just finish it without any regard for quality. This feels like they tried with the budget or time constraints they had, and it just didn't work out. I'll get Renoa, right? Hey, doggy, it's the field from the opening FMV. Like, it's usually hard to find out just from project management if a game was a shit show because it's it's sort of like the film industry where you're like you can't talk about that because you'll blacklist yourself and like that's true in the west but it's 10 times truer in japan we had to be a fly on the wall in the making of this game gently stare at this dog She controlled me in outer space and made me break a Dell seal. What might happen next time? Hey, he's doing the cipher thing. This was a leader of seed. Because it turns out Orphanage Robin Williams isn't the best person to lead a mercenary academy. The moon thing happened so fast, Serp. Oh my god. I didn't remember how insane Disc 3 is. Like, you go to this crazy future city, go to the moon and come back in the space of, like, 90 minutes. It just kind of happens, too. It's not like, oh, this is why we're going to the moon, right? It's like they fit an entire season's plot line into an episode. Don't stay at the memorial. I'll just end up going after you again. Stay close to me. Oh, those words. What? Oh, and their original original timber mission. Because of the GF, that's why I forgot. <laughs> yeah, all right, sir. I had a dream. It was a scary dream. Promise to see shooting stars together. What if the FF7 remake is actually an FF8 remake? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it like loops around Scarp. Just makes a completely straightforward, reasonable FF8. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This game has gone from, you know, teenage moody me of being bad to I think now it's just super interesting. And I think it's interesting in a way that, like, the reviewers at the time didn't really latch onto it all. 
maybe it's interesting in the context of video games and like storytelling in video games having improved so much but it's not obviously a fault of the localization the correct term is office lady <laughs> salary man I love it. <laughs> Her name is still Ultimicia, though, and she still looks like Ultimicia. She just sits at a normal cubicle desk. They have a plan to defeat Ultimicia. They want to hire Seed to execute it. The guy we spoke to, his name's Kiros. Could he be that Kiros? No, it's a different Kiros. I love salary, man. There's an old uh, Simpsons joke that in Japan they call Santa Claus annual gift man. Are you just standing there with random dialogue and you won't play cards with me anymore? Kiros is the John Smith of the fate. Security guards are called guard man. That makes sense. It's the same in Mandarin. It's the same little character of a... It's a Ren in Mandarin. It's like a little two-legged stick figure guy. And you pen that to the end of anything and it's person who does that thing. I a sorceress on the verge of death. I received your powers of my own will. So that's how Adia is a sorceress? Okay. That's helpful. This minute, my bitter story has ended. Yeah, it's, um, it's John Waters. Now go, Squall. Okay. Yeah, she goes by OL. Oh no, now it's looping back around to weird Japanese. <laughs> oh, Eddie. I think part of the reason I find the, uh, Ultimisha is Renoa trying to connect with Squall theory thralling is it's like a way to connect the beginning of the game to the end of the game in some way. It's like uh, reading a book. And like the first chapter is, you know, it's like one of those illuminated Bibles that monks used to write with the really, really fancy drawings over the text. Like that's disc one. Well, I guess they did that with Game of Thrones too, where they had like the beautiful picture of the horse and then it gets progressively less well drawn. Hey James, how you doing? I don't know the most reasonable way. Is there a way to just land in Estar? This place is ridiculous. Like, I think the size of this city alone as it appears on the world map, you could probably fit every other world map entity into the city. Final Dungeons in the first area. Yeah, I love that scarf. Moi. Well, I see one, right? I don't think there's a way for me to land it. Oh, yeah. Isn't three houses in an inn?
if uh, the Final Fantasy VII Remake wasn't such a massive shit show, I would be really excited for the FF8 Remake because there's so much to fill in here. Like you're reading a book and you get to the end and it's just bullet points, right? Like, I want to know what happened between the bullet points. I want to spend a Midgar length of time in Estar. Final Dungeon of Legend of the Guy is the first town. It's that hero's journey shit. I dig it. Dark Souls 1, technically. I mean, the kiln of the first flame is underneath Firelink Shrine. Are these like the pneumatic tubes in Futurama? <laughs> the city seems like 10 times more interesting than Midgar. We spend such little time here. Remember the air station? That's probably where I was able to park the Ragnar. Oh! <laughs> Hopefully that clear worked for you, Yukapo. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for catching yourself, sir. That works. It's weird, Leon. Not any weirder than last episode. Sakaguchi was focused almost entirely on spirits within during this game's development. Interesting. See, that's the kind of thing that I wanted to know about. But then he got his full attention back for nine. So I wonder who did it in lieu of Sakaguchi. Like... Do you think he just gave them bullet points? And they did their best with just the bullet points? <laughs> That's why Spiritual then turned out so well. It's unfortunate that Sakaguchi ended up taking full responsibility for Spirits Within. It wasn't 100% his fault, but I guess that's just the corporate culture in Japan because he was the director. is waiting. And there's a Mahjong queue? Oh, I have to sit on the couch. Dr. Odine or Odine. picture of a uh, wind hill up there. It's cute. That's your hint as to the president's identity. This is a weird section too. It's like you gotta go talk to the president and there's no cutscene when you arrive in Esther. You get here you have to find the palace and then the person's like hey come inside they want to talk to you. There's no one to talk to. There's no doors that open. You have to sit on a couch, and then the weird doctor guy walks out. 
And I guess you have to follow him to get to the next part? Kiros, and that's probably... Katase had almost full creative control as director, Hashimoto taking the role of producer. Interesting. Was this game received well in Japan then, too? Like, what was its, uh, Pnitsu score? Hey there! Squall's dad. You guys are the ones who are inside my head, right? They gave us so much power during battle. Laguna. Pleased to meet you. What do you want to know? Tell me all the lore. I don't know, it's pretty high. Explain the mission to defeat Ultimecia. Whatever. Dia told me everything. Sorceress Ultimisha comes from the future to possess the sorceress of the present day. She leaves her body in the future and sends only her consciousness here. It's like alone. So if Ultimisha was alone or Renoa would be cool. How does the sorceress come back in this time? This is kind of a cool concept, too. Like... That the alone power of you going into Laguna is something that the bad guy is doing the whole time. That's kind of fun. I kept it as a secret to surprise you. I made out a pattern from the current running through Alone's brain. It may only be a toy right now, but in the time of Ultimecia, it's an impressive working machine. Okay, it's neat. Junction machine alone. You can land the Ragnarok at the palace. Yeah, diegetic flashbacks. You're literally flashing back. Okay, let's explain all of Sakaguchi's bullet points. Fuck. <laughs> Why don't you talk to Laguna and someone will come in and just tell you all this stuff. So they built an alone machine. There's only one way to defeat Ultimecia. Kill her in the future. Nothing we can do unless we go to the future. The end of this game reminds me a lot of Earthbound. Doing something that's like super dangerous, potentially life destroying, travel through time to kill the villain at a different time in history, right? Hey Ezra, how you doing? Let's figure out what Ultimecia's up to. <laughs> Why does Ultimecia want to compress time? Who cares? <laughs> foreign, right? I wonder what it is in the Japanese, like what they're affecting him with, like speaks in all katakana or something. He looks like a, like a Flash Gordon, like, like racist oriental caricature villain. Want to possess Adele if Adele wakes up. That will be a horrible event. 
Attila's a horrible sorceress. So, okay, hold on. If they freeze, froze Adele in space, in a space coffin, does that mean that all sorceresses are immortal and you can't just, like, kill them? Like, why did they put Adele in a space coffin? Kill Adele before the awakening process is completed. Yeah, Adele is huge and and weirdly androgynous enough that like you're wondering like, do they mistranslate sorceress? Is it supposed to Is is and does is is Adele a they? Not a she? <laughs> Dump the tutorial menu. Sorceress is immortal until she passes on her powers. Okay, so Adia passing on her powers to Renoa means that Adia is no longer a sorceress, cannot be possessed by Ultimecia, and is able to die now? Is there like one single. There can't be. There, there must be multiple, like, sorceress sire lines or bloodlines, right? Because if Adele's been frozen in space with her powers intact the entire time. Once Ultimatia's in the past, she'll use the time compression magic. <laughs> Give it to me again. Simpler. There's a lot of little lines in this stuff from Odin or Odine here where he's like, Yeah, we're just gonna compress time, it's gonna be fine. Like, whoa, holy... Dude. That doesn't seem like a good idea. The term for sorceress is analogous to the English word witch. It is not used explicitly for women. None of the Japanese dialogue related to Adele implies a gender. It hasn't been assigned a gender in guides. The French version refers to Adele as he. Yeah, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Adele is a dude. Or like explicitly non-gendered. That's a pretty radical idea for 1999. Past, present, and future will all get mixed together. It does like a like a giant. Like there's a race of giants. I have questions. Where's alone? What the heck has he done with his life, don't you wonder? Alone was two, there was a massive hunt for girls in Estar. Estar soldiers came to Windhill and Elle's parents resisted. They were killed on the spot. Dude, this this section of asking Laguna questions feels like reading through Sakaguchi's bullet points for the game. If only these things were shown to us. The, all the Laguna flashbacks are in chronological order though, right? You never go further back from the first flashback. You're always going further ahead in Laguna's life. Sent her off to Windhill after that rain died and alone was sent straight to an orphanage. Why didn't you go back to Windhill with her? I had my reasons. The reason she had to leave the orphanage was because of her special power. a big ship to accommodate her. She's on the ship for over 10 years. She was attacked by Galbadia. No one followed me out into space. She get back safely from space? She's inside Lunatic Pandora. We're gonna rescue her. Help us out, okay? Okay. <laughs> he sighs at the end. 
Tell me about rain. It's too much for me to remember. Oh god, the lunar rules. I can just neglect to include them, right? The lunar rules are the worst, right? It's like a combination of every possible rule set. Play them once. Hey, that's not bad. Open elemental trade one. What the hell was I doing with these? Hey, Laguna has the Squall card. Interesting. Very interesting. Magic user, magic technique master, evil ways master. Makes sense. Every rule except open. <laughs> except the one that you want. Man, that's nuts. Give me that small card. Jeez. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Change after you went to Windhill. Alone was abducted by Esther, and you went on a journey. A journey to get alone back. You wrote articles and appeared in movies to get by. You were trying to find a way into Esther. I love this quick summary from Squall, because it's likely the player has completely lost track of what the fuck Laguna was doing. Even the whole, like, oh man. Can you just... Imagine Sakaguchi brainstorming this game, and he's like, he's like describing Laguna as a character, and he's like, oh, he's like a journalist, and he's a goofball, and he's an adventurer, and he falls in love with this person, and he used to be in the military, and he like was a movie star, and you're like, what movie star? Like, <laughs> what? So they're like, shit. They said that he's a movie star. We gotta have a scene of him being a movie star. But whenever you flash back to him, there's always has to be combat. Maybe he does this movie and like an actual dragon shows up, right? Like I obviously don't know how any of that happened. But that scene with the the movie making flashback is so weird and out of place. Especially in the context of all of the other Laguna flashbacks that seem to be like setting something else up in the story. Most of them happen in disc one, I guess. Oh god, I I think that this is the most impressively concealed shit show of all time, Final Fantasy VIII. I think that it was rocky and fucked and everything went wrong and somehow they released a product and it got a 90 on Metacritic or whatever and everybody loved it right when it came out and it reviewed well and it tested well, maybe because of JRPGs were still new and fresh in the West and everyone loved Final Fantasy VII and it had really pretty graphics and Disc 1 felt really good. But if it, like, I totally get it explaining Cypher's motivation, but, like, that's implied through the optional tutorial information text? Oh, it's so strange. Well, right, so what Esrin is saying is that the movie that he made is supposed to be the movie that inspired Cypher's whole obsession with being the Sorceress's Knight, because that's the plot of the movie that he's in. So if he's the knight of a sorceress, him fighting a dragon makes sense. Except that those scenes connecting Laguna's movie to Cypher don't exist in the game, in the finished product. It's weird. Hey, Gratzer. Most of the Laguna lore outside of this is Selfie's entries in the classroom panel. She has entries in the classroom panel about Laguna? God, it's so weird. Okay. <laughs> Squall. What I don't understand is, why are you the president? Again, Sakaguchi's bullet points. Like, yeah, he's like a movie star and a journalist and a former military man, and at the end of the story, he ends up president of the future city that sends people into space. And Katase is just like, oh my god. 
Oh, what do I do with this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a long story. Let's hear it. I set out to rescue alone, but of course that wasn't the end of the story. It's a country ruled by Sorceress Adele and the ingenious yet inhumane Odine, who is still here and everyone's fine with Mengala running around. I couldn't just pack up and leave. I can't believe that they like give you multiple warnings that this is going to be too much text, and then they actually coded a flashback for it. Every Timber Maniacs you pick up causes her to have additional entry about Laguna in her blog. A sorceress from the future was possessing him when he did this game. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I hear you. It just, it helps to understand how it became a clusterfuck. Like, I've definitely seen other movies and TV shows where things went wrong and they, like, tried to cover it up, but usually they didn't do such a good job of it, I guess. And again, I don't think it's bad, I just think it's really weird and interesting. Like, how did this happen? How did how did this game not get cancelled, basically? It is so different from the other broken or baffling AAA clusterfucks that we've played. my comrades. Two issues came up. First, stop the crystal pillar from calling monsters from the moon. Right. Oh yeah, the lunar cry happened, right? Where are all those monsters? Aren't they supposed to be on the planet now? Or is that just a cool cutscene and they're like, oh fuck, whatever. There are monsters now or something. Did it change what encounters you can get into on this disc? Really? That's interesting, James. The the stuff that I'm not the biggest fan of in the FF7 remake feels like uh, Nomura to me, but maybe it's a team effort. monsters around SR are more difficult. So are they the same enemies, but their level is increased, basically? Yeah, like, this, this game makes sense if it's... they needed eight years to make this game, and they did it two, or four years in two, or whatever, right? But they, they managed to cobble it together, and then they, like, did a really good job of, like, welding the seams. What is going on? Adele is still huge. Not just in space, but in actuality. Should we go in right away if I mentioned alone? It's a pretty important optional flashback. Patel realized alone was a hologram, but it was too late. That was how Laguna did it? <laughs> Just shoved him into the... <laughs> what? Yeah, this is the same as 7. This is a remaster, but uh, it does look a lot better than 7. They, did, they had no idea what they were doing with 7. I have to see if it got recorded. It was before Twitch was super popular, but the Sakaguchi panel I went to at PAX, he talked a lot about how much they were completely flying by the seat of their pants on 7. I had no idea what they were doing. Oh my god, there's an FMV in this?
This is an optional dialogue that it's very easy to miss if you just pick the first option and don't say, I have questions. And then he warns you that it's going to be long. You feel like that should have been in the last Laguna flashback where he was with the Moomba? And they're like, you should be the leader of our country. And he's like, what? He wasn't paying close attention and made me have to be this hero of the revolution. And then end up being president. Who did he send her back? <laughs> Only I'd gone to Windhill. So Alone is Squall's half sister. Is Alone the only sorceress adjacent character that has a special, unique power? The, the time power? Because Ultimecia doesn't have it. She's using the Alone machine. I feel like if they connected Alone into the story a little bit better. Let me out of this room. What funny looking clothes. You want to try it on? Ward won't play cards with me. I think they were saying that her possession is... She's basically just doing what uh, Alone was doing with me in Laguna, right? Like, like Alone sends Squall back in time to control his dad, Laguna. Um... And Dr. Odine, or Odine, or whatever, researches, makes a machine that does the same thing that's only a toy. But in the distant future where Ultimecia lives, the machine is like super badass, and she uses it to go back in time and possess people. Even better than what Alone's able to do, I think. Alone breaks are implied to be a magical ish thing that people can do beyond a gaming abstract. Sure. But it's not like Adia can, like, you know, she doesn't have the special ability to read people's thoughts, or Renoa doesn't have the special ability to fly, or they're not like mutants. I always wanted to ride that thing. The name sounds so cool. Misha being a sorceress is the reason the machine lets her possess people rather than just experiencing the past. Okay, gotcha. But she's interacting with a, a quirk of one particular sorceress. Does alone count as a sorceress? I don't need to pass on her power to her being defeated. Or no, will you be willing to accept them? There must be something in the information. That's the spirit. Alone sends Renoa and Ultimecia to the past. Head to the future through compressed time. Also, I'm confused, like, okay. So the supervillain's goal is to compress time. Like, once she does that, she's happy? So the way that we win is we let her do the things she wants to do? We have to stop the bad guys from blowing up the White House. Well, we can stop them, but first we have to let them blow up the White House. Alone doesn't count as a sorcerer since this isn't part of the Hein line. Okay. So... Or Hine, Hein. Uh... It, it's like siring, basically. Like you have to, you're immortal until you pass on your powers, and the next person is immortal until they pass on their powers. Someone asked that earlier in the game, and then a character was like, "What does compressing time mean?" And they're like, "Don't worry about it. We don't know." Like the implication is that all places, all times throughout history, exist in the same space, but they obviously don't explore it very well. Implications she can only possess the past because it's still her own magic. 
Oh, interesting. So the sorceress line is like diluting in power over time, and by compressing time, she can access the power of the original sorceress. Quantum mechanics BS, gotcha. You need love and friendship for this mission, and the courage to believe it. It's all about love, friendship, and courage. Thanks, Laguna. I love Squall's just like, uh... Love and friendship and all that sounds corny, but everyone seems to be up for it. It would be great if at this point in the game, you could replace Squall with Laguna. Plays the rest of the game in his sandals. It's dressed like Zoidberg. He's a journalist and a movie star and the president of a feature society, and he has a thing that's wrong with his knee? Still don't think it lets me do stuff at Lunatic Pandora, right? Oh, yes it does. I wonder if we can get through. Okay, so... In the flashback, when you're playing as Laguna in Lunatic Pandora, this is like a big monolith that they're excavating. Where did Lunatic Pandora come from? What a rude bonsai. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a long time. He gets leg cramps when he's nervous. Wait, can I just leave? Whoa. <laughs> Let me do all that work to get in there. Oh, hey, it's Fujin and Raijin. Shock. It's just how they encase the crystal pillar to move it into the ocean. So it's kind of bringing back crystals. Okay. I think you can mine all of the details out of this game, it sounds like, Aki. If you read all of the tutorial text, you go back to the console in the classroom, like, it's all there. It's just not presented as a story. Didn't remember there being another fight, and I've got Renoa in my party now, which is pointless. Alright, she's replacing Irvine. Why my health is full? I do not remember a second fight against these guys at all. More full life, that's nice. Phoenix Pinion Quest. I think I'm alright to go at this point. I need to like kill Squall. Do I have death? Is there an equal chance to get all four of the limit breaks when you have Lionheart?
Retreat. Temporary. 25% split between all of them. Okay. Can I get rid of Renoa, please? It's an even split between whichever ones you have access to. Sure, okay. Got my face! You're the worst. Your attack animation is way too slow. We can't be friends. Here, I'll make a backup save. In case anyone ever puts read all of the lore objects in Final Fantasy VIII on their sub block or something. I'm actually curious what new is in this information screen now. Location name, the moon. This is all stuff we already knew about. Ragnarok. I love this. This person list. This is wonderful. Mare Dobe, a chocobo, a moomba, a white seed, the great hind, basically god, Dr. Odine. Debbie Rickens, oh god. Go to like a Wikipedia article, it's like a list of all notable people, and it has like six people on the list. Japanese celebrities cat <laughs> and like the six people are like wildly variable importance right one of them is just like some uh, mayor of an Indiana town one of them is a dead link okay so Ragnarok hangar we're gonna make that my Safety save. If I ever wanted to go back and like read the lore. One of them is a disambiguation page, but it only has one link on it. Oh yeah, the stuff you did is Laguna Flex with this place. I forgot about that. Wait, so hold on. Before I ask Aki to answer this for me, I'm going to see if I can get the answer for myself in-game. Crystal Pillar. Crystal that causes a lunar cry by producing a strong energy field between the planet and the moon. It's believed to have originated in the moon. More research is required. Okay. So, there is a big... Final Fantasy style crystal on the moon that's attuned to monsters in some way. Somehow it landed on Earth, like maybe as a meteor or something. Doesn't matter. But it causes the lunar cry. The lunar cry has happened one time in history, or at least in recorded history, where it wiped out one of the several dead continents in the game. And then they excavated the Crystal Pillar and they're like, oh shit, this thing's bad. We can't have more monsters here. So let's put it in a 2001 A Space Odyssey monolith case thing. And maybe that will stop it from causing the Lunar Cry. But then that totally didn't work. Because we had that weird mini game in S-Star where you had to board the thing and you were on it for like 15 seconds before it kicked you off and the Lunar Cry happened anyway. 
It's happened multiple times in history, but the catastrophic one was the Dead Continent. Okay, gotcha. Because they're putting the lunar thing in a box. Yeah. Crater North and Star Betrayal Garden that causes the garden to get glitchy. It's also a lunar cry remnant. It's like you're mining secrets. It's like. It's like Final Fantasy VIII was. Like the Epic of Gilgamesh or something. And there are very few remaining copies of it, or like the Dead Sea Scrolls or something. What the fuck is a Love Love G and what is it doing down here? So you have all these like partial bits and pieces, and Aki is one of several Final Fantasy VIII fan archaeologists that are like picking through the game trying to put all this together into a complete picture. Right, yeah, there's that Galbadian machine. Love Love G is a Guardian Force affinity item. Oh, can you see affinity? I think you can, right? It just affects how quickly they uh, are summoned. Raises compatibility with all GF. Why not? Went up by 20. Base strength value. He's already maxed. I guess we'll put him on Zell. Well, Squall's the only person I always have in my party. see where we are in the credits, but the way I'm currently thinking of putting this game to rest is that it was, it probably needed at least four years to be fully fleshed out. It probably needed to be longer. Like, there's 60 hours of ideas in a 43 hour how long to beat. Um, Sakaguchi had his attention split between this and Spirits Within. And so he did the normal creative thing of making like a, a big outline or a list of bullet points or ideas, but didn't get much further than the ideas list, or at least got pulled off from the transition from ideas to plot after disc one. And he just kind of gave his random notepad to Katase and the rest of the team that was tasked with actually finishing the game. And they just did their best with what they had and still managed to fit all of those things in there, somehow. Affinity's weird, raising affinity with 1GF lowers compatibility with others of opposing natures. It tracks throughout the entire game based on the skills you use, even before using those items. What? That's nuts. I think I just went in a circle, hold on. Oh wait, no, this looks like progress. love the art in this game. Like some of the like the camera angle here is awesome. This is so cool, right? When you go to the GF page, you can see their compatibility with each character. And it goes up primarily with summons, not just having them junctioned and leveling up, right? I think the purpose of this room is this is a way that you can board Lunatic Pandora. This is one of the doors you can get into it from. But you can't leave from here. I 
Hey, this is the screen where Zell got kicked out by the Galbadian robot. Now we get to fight it? Instead of it kicking us out in a cutscene? We're stronger now, or something. It looks pretty fancy to be a Galbadian robot, though. It has flair, which I already have. Alright, nice. Summoning them will raise affinity using like abilities like fire, raising affinity with Ifrit, but doing so with lower compatibility with shield and cause your summon slower. Wow. I feel like Lionheart's not even particularly difficult to get. It's like this game's equivalent of, um... Knights of the Round, but you get the magazine that shows you the ingredients for it, like just as part of the main story. It's not even really hidden. It's in the one Laguna flashback, right? Which I guess raises some questions about how do you get an item in a Laguna flashback and then have it in the present. But whatever, it's fine. We got. More access to Mug, which is cool. The bonus I don't actually need. I'm serious when I say I'd love to see if someone's made a guide for playing Final Fantasy VIII on purpose with a smooth difficulty curve. You have to follow very specific instructions to make the game have a similar difficulty curve to any other Final Fantasy. Uh, evade Junction, please. Thank you. So let me be sure Gus starts reading this because you found it, obviously. Junction here, which is cool. I don't know what junction's still luck though. Pain, interesting. So that'll help with crits. I'm tempted to de junction elemental from them just so we don't run into a random fight. I feel like that's a liability more than it's a benefit. Life and full life makes it so that you resist or absorb lots of elements. Oh, nice. The final dungeon is still pretty long. We're not going to beat it today. Even the final boss is pretty long, if I recall, even with Lionheart. Is that a projection of clouds in the background, or is that like an opening in the side of the thing? One second, Ben is up to no good, I'll be right back. Well, it finally happened. Keep being worried that when Ben is by the door next to the stream office, that he's looking out into the forest at a bear on our porch. Not a bear on our porch, but there is an animal control team out there, and we've been getting notices from the HOA that there has been multiple bears on the premises trying to get into our dumpsters. We have a grill in the back. So I don't know what happened. we will go back to streaming. I think we're fine.
Cypher, we're quitting, you know. Thought we were a posse. We always will be. Yeah, I know the final dungeon's huge. I'll probably do everything in the final dungeon. I think it's cool. How does that work? It's like doing different bosses in the final dungeon unlocks different mechanics that are locked to you when you first get in. Like you have to unlock draw and magic and that kind of thing. I can't get through to you. Oh yeah, Fujin's talking normally instead of talking in one word shouts. Are you going to continue with this knight thing? The knight is retired. Call me a young revolutionary. I like how his model is, uh, quotes all fucked up now. He's gotta be doing something big. I'm gonna play this game before, I just don't remember. Oh, this! I forgot about this! This is so cool! <laughs> this blew my mind when I was a kid. I had played Final Fantasy V, and uh, I didn't know this. I was like, really? A boss fight? <laughs> There goes Odin's sword. Uh, so, okay, hold on. Before I go further, uh, does the second half of this happen no matter what in this fight? Can I just beat the boss and then the second thing will happen? Or do I have to, like, get to low health or survive for a certain amount of time? It happens no matter what. Okay, thank you. That's so cool. It's ridiculous, like, how come Cypher is able to one-shot Odin? Beat him or let 13 turns pass. All right, I'm gonna fast forward and draw his auras here. I need those. Cypher's low-key. <laughs> this game has a shitload of really cool moments. Even after disc one. Makes as much sense as everything else in the game, right? It really worked out for Cypher. Honestly, the triple fast forward during drawing stock is probably the biggest source of time savings, even more so than no encounters. It's probably saved an hour over the course of the whole playthrough. The normal draw animation is really slow. It also makes the game run at 60 FPS when it's on.
Torque counter would be nice. Here we go. Cool. My man Greg. You gave me the fourth one. Huh? Was it you? It's interesting, he's got the extra arms as like a little cardboard thing on the side for some reason. Now this is the same Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy V. I think when they said Dimensional Interval, they meant the Cleft of Dimension, right? However, they have officially localized it. FF5 Gilgamesh is the same Gilgamesh that's in 8, 12, and 14, I think. The only character that's the same across multiple games. They gotta make Final Fantasy G now, where you play as Gilgamesh and visit all the other games. Oh no, Renoa can't be in my party anymore. Oh man, I'll have to I'm gonna have to adjust. You're not like that. Sorceresses as one. That is Ultimicia's wish. Okay, I guess that's setting that up. Okay, did they do the whole thing in this game where uh, Renoa used to date Cypher or something? Oh, absolutely, and the whole theme of dimensional travel, yeah. Bahamut is a very confused omnipresent entity. Except in 9, where he's replaced by his doppelganger robot brother. <laughs> oh, we're on disc 4 now, aren't we? That's the end of the disc. Man. Crazy. I think this game has one of the longest final dungeons in a Final Fantasy. Kepka's tower is pretty big. The crater is not that bad in seven. She mentions dating Cypher. That won't be spoken of in the past tense, okay. So I wonder if that's just like, sometimes you'll notice that creators have some running ideas that they like in all of their works. Oh. It's kind of like Eris dating Zack. It's a cool little path here. I need to, like, kill him out of combat to get his health even lower. I think that's low enough for technically the breaks to trigger. Yeah, I think it's a really cool dungeon. I don't remember the layout. I know it has a bunch of puzzles and optional bosses. Graphics! Adele is the leader of uh, Estar and was totally okay with them building. Oh, that's cool. Renault has been crucified to Adele. Oh, seriously? They just summoned Gilgamesh for a boss fight? Is that possible? Oh my god. Oh, it's Zandatsuken. Oh, it missed, okay. 
That's such an important fight. Just go for Adele. It's funny. Ultimecia possessed Renoa when she was in the spacesuit. She did a thing to free Adele. I guess we didn't see a cutscene of Adele falling to the planet, but I guess that's what happened. The, the space coffin fell to the planet somehow and is now attached to Lunatic Pandora. The rest can kill almost every boss. That's cool. So I want to use Lionheart here because it might target Renoa and that would be bad. I like how part of Renoa is like a texture on Adele's chest. That wouldn't be obvious on the PS1 version, but in the remaster you can tell that part of her is articulated and part of her is not. Now's your chance. I kind of like this idea of abusing the whole time travel thing. It's kind of like Steins Gate. I wish it was explained a little better or set up better. When I was inside Adele, the young Adele. To me, she's inside Adele exactly as she wanted. Although well, that just happens off screen. They just describe it instead of showing it to us. <laughs> Love, friendship, and courage. Show them what you got. Alright, so Ultimecia, a sorceress from the future, just ended up going back in time to when Adele was a really powerful sorceress when she was younger and is now using the magic that she has to compress time, which is a thing we're trying to stop. And we're stopping Ultimecia by letting her do the thing. This is a cool scene, yeah. All the FMVs and set pieces are great. Yo, where are we supposed to go? Go to Adia's house. No, I'll probably disappear. I won't let you disappear. That's not how this works, Squall. Three Kingdom Hearts, alright. Time takes time to compress. Get to her earlier than the rest of time to stop the rest of time from not happening. Got it. Twelve two. You mean thirteen two? Whoa, doing some Silent Hill shit. I love this theme. It's so uncomfortable. Oh, I thought Revenant Wings was a like a RTS spinoff. Like Dirty of Cerberus is a spin-off action game. But no, for now I'm planning to only do the main series games, but I will do the 13 trilogy.
Oh yeah, these are like all of the sorceresses or something, right? We're going to all these different locations throughout time. This is a very rich setting in the bullet points. This is a great theme too, I agree. Yeah, I like that it's happening in game. Not just an FMV. We're off screen like a few things just were. I guess ideally we would have learned more about some of the other sorceresses here and fought them here as real enemies. Actually, think we'll see as we play through it, but I seem to remember Disc 4 being pretty great. Like, just actually great. If you're willing to accept all of the nonsense that got us here and just be like, okay, time compression, crazy palace, puzzles, bosses. Different room. This is just four now. If I said just three earlier, I meant the final disc. Discs two and three are bizarre and weird and are missing interconnected tissue. Holy holy. This is gonna take a while. Cool Naga Sorceress lady, like, physically attacks me. Disc 4 is good. Based on my memory, last time I saw this played was nine years ago when I watched my wife play through it, so... We'll see if it holds up to that memory. meant to be a humanoid flesh monster. Interesting. Uh-oh, that seems bad. I'm like it when bosses start counting down.
should be able to win with a single squall in a break, I think. Yeah, like, like disc 4 being weird is kind of in the premise of time compression, so... As long as you're willing to accept all the nonsense that got you here, as a really super bizarre final dungeon, I think it kind of works. Six holes. Can I get a squall in the break off before he does his or thing? Nope, there's Ultima. Zell might survive it? Let's see. Disc ends with a cypher fight, doesn't it? Just kind of cool. Forbidden medicine are fine. Forbidden medicine. Mag up. Oh, like the stat boost items? So you get a perfect save. Well, you always fight Adia with Cypher. Theme is so good. It's got that cool triplet eighth note pattern. Hey, Vox Dragon, D Rock, how you doing? Every disc ends at the Sorcerer's Knight. <laughs> Future seeds are fighting across generations. It's a cool concept. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, it's. Oh, you can't hear it because of the RTX. Uh, triplets and eighth notes at the same time. It's a pretty fun thing to play on like drums or even just on your desk. Try playing triplets with one hand and eighth notes with the other. I know, right? This might be a fun playthrough to watch on YouTube at some point, Brash. We've been trying to like figure out what the hell happened with this game. Didn't have enough time. A lot of the bullet points after disc two are still there and are still cool. One of the set pieces here, climbing this giant chain onto this castle, it's so strange. So this is a way to go back and explore parts of the world to get things that you missed, basically.
This team is really good too. It's one of those teams that works better if you have battles turned off because it gets really good a ways into it. Get the Ragnarok again. Never seen anything so creepy. I think what's her face really lives here? Oh, they added Ultimisha, that's cool. Divide into two parties. I might need move find again now, right? There's a couple move find like save points and draw points in here. Following powers have been sealed. Item, magic, GF, draw, command, loot break, resurrection, and save. I think I always got save first because it stressed me out not having access to it. Seal has been temporarily broken. one such hidden draw point. Oh no, I've played Promise a few times before. Aura Junction is to hit, apparently. Okay. Hanger save. Okay, so what exactly gets disabled? There's stat junction stick around. Now, you would try to get draw early because that's a way to recover the GFs that you may have missed up to this point, right? Something like that. Optional bosses in here all have the missing GFs. Right. Actually, I don't know. Do they get the regular abilities? No, they're all disabled. Okay. Passive Sora on, though. I don't think I've ever done this place without a guide, so I'm gonna try to just figure it out, but I might have to look some stuff up. I remember it being pretty tricky. It's rusted and cannot be opened. Is there anything I could do wrong in here? Like, screw it up so that I can't uh, fight anything? And I'd love to just try to do this blind as much as possible before I start looking stuff up. Nothing in here is permanently missable. Okay, thanks. I think this is where you fight a mega weapon. You have to do some shenanigans to be able to do that.
figure out what that puzzle is. I think some of these are pretty uh, obtuse. Next, I think Fighting Omega could be defined as something wrong. I am going to fight it. I think we should be able to beat it. Holy War is in Lionheart. To be the only super boss that I do. Oh, I think I could have gotten that. Is it still falling down? Hold on. I think I have to use the analog stick to walk. Yeah, because the bridge is shaking. Hold up. Enjoy more of this rocket song. Fast forward, try to get back there. So that's the thing where if you do that wrong, it just takes you longer to do stuff with it. Yeah, sure. You have to go further to get it back, basically. Just in case that's an event flag. Do you need to use two parties here to solve anything? Is it like the FF6 Kefka dungeon? Walk, don't run. Armory key. Two parties to access some of the bosses. Oh, right, saving is locked out. That's right. I just love the look of this place, too. It's so cool and it's in such contrast with the rest of Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, this place has strong Castlevania energy. The part of the game where the actual theme of the game is nothing makes sense, and it works. It turns out they're really good at doing that on purpose. He's probably not a great first boss to fight without any abilities. You might even have Mega Flare. Well, I'll give it a try. It's not a huge time loss. Face my wrath for seeking my power. Do any of these bosses have particularly amazing draws that are hard to get otherwise? I think I have most of the most interesting items. Oh, I should have topped them off before I did this. Uh-oh. Because I don't have limit breaks, so being low on health is not good. I have no way to heal, because items are locked out. I'm about to get Mega Flared. D. Oh wow, I might actually get to see how this boss kills you. I think every time I fought this thing, I just loaded and lionhearted. Okay. Hey Lord, how you doing? EA. This dungeon reminds me most of, um, is it Final Fantasy V? 
has a bunch of, oh no, four actually, has a bunch of optional super hard bosses in the final dungeon that all have unique quirks to beat them. I guess five has it too, doesn't it? They're like um, Final Fantasy X Colosseum style bosses. Oh, I wish it was cold here. We still have a heat wave going on in the American Southwest. Yeah, I think Shinryu and Omega are the first two significant super bosses in Final Fantasy. Then there's all these like regular bosses in the Final Fantasy IV Final Dungeon that all have weird mechanics to fight them. Hey, we ended up not dying. Yeah, I wish unlocking the bosses in Final Fantasy X wasn't such a hassle. Fighting them is fun. It's like, hey, we made this game easy to break. Here's some bosses where you actually have to break the game in order to beat them. Ooh, status card. Uh, let's do limit break first, actually. I'll probably do draw next. Well, that screen was all fuzzy. I wonder if they, that was like an image in the original game and the remaster didn't update it for whatever reason. Okay, I should probably head back to the same point outside. Oh, I can't even top anyone off. Incredible. I can still heal out of combat, though. Interesting. No, 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 this is just exchanging, not using. Okay. So I'd have to top off at the same point outside the castle if I wanted to heal. I think 10 has aged really well. It's the best, most fully realized Final Fantasy story. I like 6 the most. I just like some of its core conceits. I like the ensemble cast. I like the way it ends. But 10 is just really solidly told and it's actually kind of simple. And they said Ultimation one at a time, they weren't kidding. Now, okay. Um, I've never done Final Fantasy VIII without 100%ing this castle. Can I technically go beat the game with no abilities if I run down this bridge? Yeah, but most, most Final Fantasies are more linear than they appear to be. I don't know, I've kind of gotten over, like... Simulating nonlinearity. That is a thing you could attempt. <laughs> oh, you get a warning at the door. Okay, so you know that that's where you're doing. That's why I was wondering if you could accidentally stumble into it just exploring the castle. That's fair. Depends on what value you're getting out of the game. If you're playing Final Fantasy for gameplay, then choices, you're pretty much going to go down the same track every time you play it. Yeah, I think that the linearity works to its benefit from a storytelling perspective. Seeing things in a very specific structured order. Ten's your favorite after this one. I think six is my favorite, and then I'd have to think after that. I've liked ten more every time I've replayed it. Six, probably nine. Nine is mechanically 
probably my favorite Final Fantasy. It feels the most balanced throughout the whole game. You never completely break it. I really like tying skills to equipment because you suddenly care about all the items you find. Getting one early upgrade doesn't make you not care about other items. Yeah. I know not everyone had this experience, but I actually had the benefit of 9 being nostalgic. Because I played 4, 5, and 6 before 7 came out when I was a kid. So when 7 and 8 went all sci-fi fantasy, it was kind of cool to go back to the roots with 9. That makes sense, Aki, yeah. The combat does feel slow in... in 9. Can you hear that for sure? Five's really good, and I like when they just do a straight up job system. Boss. Yeah, that's kind of nostalgic too, though, because all of the early Final Fantasy games, Sakaguchi just had a random ass pull. Like, oh, Cloud of Darkness? Okay. Is Aromas? Whatever. Kefka is kind of unusual in that you're fighting a boss that's been set up throughout the whole game. I guess same with X-Death. Chaos is kind of random. Him being Garland is cool, though. There's a really angry dude on the moon. It actually happens twice in 4, right? Zemus is random and Zeromus is randomer. And hey, look at this screen. I feel like this is like just like a picture they took? Um, I guess let's do true. Probably get save after that. I know, right, Kevin? It might have a thing where it's like set to phase transition when you deplete its health. A little weird for me at the end. It's like Golbez and Fusoya beat Zemus, but it's like, oh wait, no! He still hates things a lot. Yeah, that's it. This is the end of the game, just for him, final dungeon. this memory of this crazy painting puzzle, and I've never actually solved it for myself. I only ever used a Brady Games guide when I was a kid. So I'm excited to give it a try now.
Wait, so this is like, if you have encounter none on, this is how you're gonna be able to deal with this, basically? You have to like, run somewhere really quick? I assume, I don't remember how this actually works from playing it before. Oh, this might actually be how you fight Omega Weapon, this bell. I don't remember, though. No, I can't do that. Right, I'll try it later. I want to at least have magic so I can pick people up, because I don't have that unlocked yet. I'm not gonna have a good time with just draw and limit break unlocked. I need to have item actually to have a chance because I need to use those uh, invincibility items. This room. Let me see if I can solve this without a guide. I will look it up if I have to. Indiana Jones puzzle room. Ignis fire. And Andantia flood. This is a remaster. DCM Judgment. This is the coolest fucking puzzle. If everyone I played D&D with didn't already play Final Fantasy VIII, I would rip this off. I don't know yet. I get multiple chances to guess, right? Any other paintings? Enter Vigilium, sleep. I remember that I have to somehow use those other paintings to figure out the name of the main painting, but I don't remember the trick to it. I'll just have to look at all the paintings first. Yeah. Vigil, Watchman. This is like a Silent Hill puzzle. Uh, is that they doing a Last Crusade thing with the clock? X never ever marks the spot. Pividarium. Alright, so it's... It's interesting, they... Four is four eyes instead of IV, it looks like. So four eyes... VI is six. The III is eight. Let's go to the other paintings. I think that might be part of it. By a tour. Venus, love. Yeah, I'm just saying it's nostalgic for nine, right? It's a thing that Sakaguchi had done before in the more medievally focused Final Fantasies. At that time, a quarter of the Final Fantasy games had a rando final boss. Cepheus, Swordfish.
I'm not even gonna try it. Red clothes, okay. Tree-lined road. Cowardice. So I think the thing that has that is in common between all of these paintings is the use of the letters I, U, I, V, and X, which show up on the uh, clock on the ground. So I think I need to find one that has a V and three I's in it. One that has four I's in it, and one that has just a V and an I in it. Twelve is going to be practically blind for me. I played it in a weekend and remember nothing from it now. I don't know if that's the proper order. It has too many eyes. Alright, so, and then there's four eyes. There's also a V in there. One has four eyes. Shoot, what was the second hand at the bottom pointing to? Was it just VI? In the garden sleeps a messenger. It's cool. It was VI at the bottom, that's awesome. That's such a cool puzzle. When I think of Final Fantasy VIII, I remember that painting puzzle. Rip that off for D&D. Find a group that's never played FF8 before. Yeah, I wasn't sure if there was actually four eyes in the... in four. It was hard to tell from the top there. This vividarium had a V in it still. Or intervigilum or whatever it was. Yeah, I've played Tales of Symphonia. That's the only one that I've played a lot of. That was pretty good. Flat, right? Several of them are real. A couple of them are kind of a stretch, I think. I know the one for Judgment is real. Trauma has a meltdown, which I already have a ton. See if I can draw a few more for Zell, help with this a bit here. I might have to bail on this at some point though. I should have moved stuff around, Gazelle I think is my slowest character with the worst magic stat. I don't want to risk it, since I don't have any way to heal. Sure, 
drain. Don't hit Squall with that, please. Oh, he's draining the little thing. Okay. He's doing that as a counter attack, basically. Droma has a Suna and a spell. <laughs> There's only so many things you can do in a turn-based RPG. The custom battle background for this boss. They put a lot of work into this final dungeon. Home attack junction... Let's do magic next, so I have a way to res, do item after that, and I can maybe fight Num Nuts after that. Oh, they can't use magic out of party, that's interesting. Okay, well I think I can still exchange Kira onto somebody here. Should have kept Squall though, whoops. Hmm, saving the heals in Final Fantasy X. Otherwise you have to use Tense. All right, I'm glad we did the painting puzzle. That one's really cool. myself of a cool experience as a kid for using a guide for that. There's a couple things in this game that feel like how could someone possibly know that without a guide, like how to get the Kiros card from what uh, Aki was talking about. That seemed very reasonable. Ultima drop point. Face my wrath for seeking thy sealed power. Okay. Haven't we fought regular versions of this guy before? Like repeatedly? Got yeah, Quake, I guess. Oh, this is the boss that casts Doom on you in the final dungeon. Okay. Oops, I mean to hit Zell there. No, he gets poison, that's kinda cool. Is this an enhanced version of it or is it the same enemy? It's kinda like a, a gimme unlock boss. The random encounters in the castle are past bosses. That's cool. Faded circle. Okay, that's cool. Neat. I think he may have just put the no limit breaks debuff on me, which I'm not sure as soon as I can cure. Maybe I can.
got a physical counterattack, which is pretty nasty, it looks like. Oh, don't Berserk Squall. You might have protection from Berserk. Nope. That he does not. That uh, lets him use his counter, and it's clever. It was Leet, very right, briefly. Gargantua. So, if you forget to get the GFs from them in here, then you're screwed? Or are you able to fight them multiple times? Or do some of the past bosses that spawn with random encounters let you fight them? Light weights, rune armlet, magic armlets. Just got the speed up unlock, that's cool. Item, please. It's funny, I think I'm gonna unlock GF last. Which is the opposite of what I would have done as a kid. Fade Junction seems pretty nice. Do I even need the strength up anymore to hit max? I do. Okay. I've got my speed about as high as it's going to go. Even saw off my weapon. these guys are done and I wasn't even really going for it. Just trying to run back to a save point in the underwater research facility. There's auto haste. Yes, please. Didn't realize, oh man, I get all these wasted abilities. I guess I got that from speed 40% up. I want to get that before we leave for Squall. It would be wonderful. Glad someone learns it organically. And at some point, I am going to go ahead and do, um... Show off all the summon animations before the playthrough is done. We got a ways to go yet before I do that. You can still go to the deep sea deposit this late in the game. Just you can't go in the towns. They save their disk space by locking them out. If these games would have been structured differently if they'd been an install instead of the multiple discs, right? Need to check before I get to the Ragnarok. Hey, friend. Hopefully it doesn't kill me, because I haven't saved in a minute. It's Demi. Oh yeah, we're gonna want to cast Meltdown on him or we're gonna have a bad time. Hopefully he's not, like, resistant to it or something. It would be fun if he's weak against Demi. Hey, good.
No, this isn't the original game. There's nothing new in the remaster. It's just graphics changes. This might be my favorite final dungeon in Final Fantasy. I have to think more. Kepka's Tower is pretty fucking great because it, it uses your whole party in an ensemble past game. And it's such a cool, like, hopeless ascent. So this probably competes with that. Diamond Armor. So that boss, Meltdown, basically negates its main mechanic. Meltdown sets their vitality stat to zero. And the whole thing with the boss has an extremely high vitality stat. Uh, let's do saving now. I guess resurrection. So I guess resurrection is useless to unlock on its own, right? You need to also have uh, item or magic unlocks. treat those as a save point by putting your other party member near a save point. Oh, this, this is really cool. Perspective on this screen is kind of awesome. There's a save. Oh, I haven't unlocked saving. That's right, I did resurrection. Set out the front then so I don't lose any progress. Oh, I think I remember that that elevator thing. Is it like it's calibrated based on the weight of the party members or something like that? That's one of the ones where you need to have both parties to get through it to fight one of the bosses. Now, most of this is open rhetorical speculation of me trying to remember how the game works, but Aki, you can answer this. Did they set up a mega weapon that you have to have encounter none to get there before the time runs out? And like, straight shot, run right there? Make sure you don't accidentally fight it, I guess. Precious progress has been saved. That's a cool way to keep you from accidentally fighting the super boss. Which is broken. I think it's like if you have all the male characters that Chandelier falls, that seems familiar. I remember being really weirded out by the weight puzzles. Oh, did I not finish drawing for everyone else? They must have gotten close, but not quite there. How many auras is he sitting on? 96, okay. Yeah, I must have gotten them all to 90 and then killed Cypher. I'll do save after this one. I'm mostly fully functional. Using elemental attacks. Whatever I don't use, I don't like. See, that's such a cool mechanic for a boss fight, though, because... Limit breaks don't care, I don't think it matters. And it's like, it's not even like limit breaks are a hidden mechanic, like Aura specifically lets you use them even when you're at full health. It's not like Final Fantasy VI where you can play through the game several dozen times and only ever see a limit break once. 
taking credit for the cipher kill. Kill the match kill. Omega weapon or ultimate weapon? Ultimate weapon's a doable regular optional boss, I think. Omega is just goofy for the sake of being goofy. I think I may have seen it once. Desperation attack. I think it's just that the only way you're ever going to fight Omega is if you're following a guide. I guess you could stumble into him if you're wondering what the deal is with the shadowy goop in the cathedral and what it means when you ring the bell and it's like there's a countdown and it says you hear monsters somewhere. You might go in that direction to scope it out. I thought there was another element to it other than just those two things, but I guess we'll find out. Omega always stuck with me because it's the... Uh, it's where Square got the idea of we're going to give you a key item for beating a super boss that doesn't do anything. And to me it was always like, is this so that, like... Um... You can have your friends over and load up your memory card and show them the key item and be like, see, I beat this boss. I think they can hold that down or something. All right, and now the party, it's all level 14, but it's okay because of the way the scaling works, question mark. Well, the one in seven is, it has a specific purpose. You get the unlocks. I think they did it in eight just to show off. I think they can cross the top because they're lower weight or something like that. It's unfortunate that the three lady characters in this game have the least good limit breaks in terms of like multiple hits. Well, that's not going to end well. Um, I did save recently, though. Just prove Omega do something on the tutorial screen. I have never been in that information tab before. I played this game maybe four times as a kid, and then watched my wife play it nine years ago, and my first time ever seeing that tab was uh, after you directed me to it. It's so buried. Like, it's different from there being a, like, a codex, or, like, information, or people, or glossary icon. It's like, tutorial, info, why would you go to info again? Okay, Kevin, let's go. I found a few schools near you. The first one is Los Alamos. Apparently, my Google Home got confused. Sure, cancel. By the way, approved voice recognition. Oh shit, I'm about to die. I forgot to switch junctions after I went to go save. Hey, it's Fast to Talklands. Bye. Bye.
Well, what's this random babble shit? Alright, let's see how this goes with my completely underleveled party. So I think this is a weight thing, and maybe it's not. Maybe that's the elevator. And this one's just you have to have someone holding the lever to cross over. Let's see if there's any blue magic that I never got around to teaching her. I'm gonna use for something else. I know you, you're a card. Show me what you got. That's Holy Junction. God, the spells she can do are all terrible because her health is so low, presumably. see all of the cards for the final dungeon bosses really early in this game. We were able to see them early. Is this like an ability she only gets after getting sorcerer's powers? Party wide res or something. Oh, now she's just auto casting shitty spells instead of doing damage. Cool. That does a small amount of damage. Magical Berserk with offensive spells she has in her stock. I hate every word you just said. <laughs> that all sounds awful. Wait, really? So like if you just give her Ultima or something, it's pretty good? Their regular attacks. This boss has got to be like level fourteen or something. Yikes. Is this one of those cast Ultima when it dies signature Final Fantasy bosses? Yay, Shell. Hey, I was right. Nice. You did it, Selfie. I'm proud of you. I think that means a couple GFs lose out on AP, which is a bummer. Lambda 4, that's cool.
So I need them in one more room. Sure, I have the right junctions here. You know? No major changes to their magics. I guess, can you junction wholly to elemental? Oh. I'm guessing that could screw you over on certain bosses. Trying to give all the holies to Squall really quick. Irvine, I guess. Let's see. I've got one more. I think it's at least one more optional boss. I don't remember if there are more bosses and there are abilities to unlock. Um, then we'll do a mega weapon and we'll see what time it is. I don't have the option to go over tonight, so after Omega, an Omega attempt, I'm probably going to call it, because if I recall correctly, the end of the game is really long, both in terms of cutscenes and in the fights themselves, even if you're super OP. So I think we want the girls to be on the bottom. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Even if I rush the ending right now, I think it might even be longer than that. It's been a while, so I don't particularly remember, but I remember it not being like over in a flash. Translation? Yes. Omega, take two, because I probably won't beat him today, because he's pretty hard. Final boss, I expect next week will be about an hour. It'll be like Metroid Fusion this week. how to get to... I don't remember. just need to fumble until I find my way to the other side of that elevator room. It might have been through here, through the painting room. Let me try that again. Did 
King's Quest and Eternal Darkness. I forgot again. Yikes. Oh no, not this forbidden guy. One time I wiped against a rando enemy. I want to leave plenty of room for King's Quest though, because I have no idea how much time it's actually going to take since it's an adventure game. That was not on purpose. I'm not going to do that right now. Find the last boss first. Castlevania as fuck. Forbidden's the only one that's never given you a game over. It was really weird. It was a super frustrating fight. The boss had a ton of health and then like enraged on me and insta-killed me. I'm still not completely clear what happened. The party must be in the same place to change party members, okay. More high potions. Floodgate key. Might be all that's in this room. Doesn't appear to be a boss in here. Well, that was worth it. Oh, it pushes you off the thing when you switch like that. How rude. Sounds like I need to go down. I think this is right. Okay, it does something in a different room, I guess? Close to the other side. It does not open from this side. find it.
Might not get Andrea tonight to show off all those summons, so I'll make sure I do that at the start of uh, next week. She'll be home from work. Stay safe on the hurricane. So you have no idea where to look. Oh, shit. Sorry. Keep clicking that by accident. Can you fan ID's aim? Let me finish her clean up the Final Fantasy series. One, two, and three are all going to be close to blind for me, even though I have played them before. I played them all once a while ago. Another door in the bottom that I've been neglecting due to the floodgates. I don't think so, actually. FF7 Remake. Yeah, it's pretty different. Let me do some fun stuff with it, though. You still collect your seed salary. Despite time and space being compressed. No problem. I don't think there's anything new down here, but this is the only place I can think of where water was flowing. I might ask for help here soon. Done all of the blind-ish stuff that I can do. I've got a couple more rooms to check out before I ask this, so give me a sec. Oh, this is a thing. Treasure Vault Key. description here, maybe I don't have one. So, doing the thing with the water is what unlocked that key, basically. Oh, this one's involved. Is there some shenanigan in this room where, like, the number of spears that are pointing up changes whenever you walk in here. Otherwise, it's an extremely suspicious dead end. It's only two out of eight that are down. I don't remember how that works at all. I think they all go down eventually, but I don't remember how. I said, this is a long dungeon. Let's run around. Oh, you know, I think that might be what this is. It's like you slam all of them. End concert. Like, where am I going to find the code for this? Yeah, that's why two of them are down, because it's it's like you press each of the notes and then some of the spikes correspond to some of the notes. I think I do remember that now. Here the water is drained, presumably. Rosetta Stone? Isn't that the one that teaches you ability times four? 
Wow, that you like try to get from uh, the guy in the desert prison. All right, so we got to give it to one of Zell's GFs. He always runs Diablos. So I'd have to drop something from Diablos, I think, because I think he's full. Yeah. So we'll drop magic. Here's my amnesia greens. Diablos. Now Zell can equip a fourth ability, which unfortunately does not include a strength bonus, but I could maybe give him one through shenanigans. I think I have something that gives strength up. Strength 20. I thought I had strength 40. Maybe I already used all of those. Let me see if I can uh, mod one. Oh, do I have to be at a save point to mod stuff? Huh. Well, let me give him something in the meantime. Time is compressed. You get all your salaries for your lifetime all at once. Alright, well that connects around. So I was expecting there to be a boss here somewhere. Is that the main reward for the organ, is the uh, Rosetta Stone? Or have I made any further progress to fighting another boss? I thought you could climb up this thing here, maybe. But regardless, I still have the Treasure Vault key. I have no idea. I don't think I've seen a locked door, or if I did, I don't remember where it was. So I feel like I've done a pretty decent job of either kind of sort of remembering parts of this place or figuring them out from scratch. Uh, since I'm down to just one more thing before Omega Weapon, I will go ahead and ask for a hint. Uh, where should I go to use the treasure vault key? And why is it not showing up in my inventory? It's possible I'm blind. Sorceress's letter is like the only key item that shows up in here. Might be this ladder. Hold on. the top of where I just drained the water, I think. Well, maybe this just exists to tell you, hey, there's a way to explore down here, you should figure it out. heading towards the end and there's nothing else in this clock tower place. Oh, I need to have GF unlocked in order to use those abilities. That's funny. Card mod. Oh, we definitely have to find this boss thing because I have to card mod Gilgamesh to have a chance against a mega weapon. Okay, I'm gonna look it up really quick. Okay, treasure room is right. A hallway leading to the lift when the camera angle is tilted. Huh.
I've already been in that hallway before. Unless if it's like a secret, like mash the confirm button kind of thing. I think they're talking about the one with all the pretty candles, the, the Castlevania hallway. There's the other hallway leading away from the lift. Assuming we're talking about the same lift here. Oh, hey, they're still over here. That's funny. There's a thing in this room? Oh, I'm glad I looked it up. I would not have thought to check. Use the treasure vault key. Wow. Okay. Cool. Just a lights out puzzle. It is. Oh, lights on, apparently. Spooky. It's a behemoth. Don't know if this guy has any interesting draws. I am Katobulpas. What do you humans plan to do against the likes of me? Uh, use Lionheart on you to wreck you really fast. He would be so kind. He does have Meteor, that's nice. Everyone else has Max Meteors. The one spell that you cast in Final Fantasy VIII that isn't like life behemish. It's pretty good. Daga. Search on these. Come on, guys. Just want to spam turn change. Here we go. He might do a death meteor cast if he's supposed to be behemoth. He. Oh, that might be what that is. And everyone's not topped off, so this could be bad. Let's see. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Wonder why they call him Katolopas instead of like King Behemoth. I lose some AP on Squall. I guess he would have died regardless since it's a death attack. We all celebrate with Squall's corpse is just lying there. Status attack junction. Cool. Okay, well we've beaten all the optional bosses except for this game super boss and I basically never fight super bosses on stream but in this game I think Omega is possible uh, it will probably take more than 10 minutes but I will go give it one try and then we'll probably beat him for real next time this game is so thoroughly broken the super boss isn't that bad so I was gonna look for GF 
ability medicine, which there's nothing I can get. Um, let me save before I card mod. I want to have a save where I didn't delete any of my nice cards, like Gilgamesh, because I'm silly. Also, I should confirm the path to the church. So I don't remember the fastest way to get there. I think it's on the bottom floor on the left. I think we also want to do this with everyone at full health too, instead of trying to do critical health. Yeah, I think this is right. So I'll just use a horror to give everyone their limit breaks. Tents, which are not as useful in this game because plus restores all GF because you don't have MP. Card mod. May as well just do all of these now, right? I will take the Mega Elixirs, though. Ten Holy Wars. I think that's enough. Um, and then I need to give everyone item. God, I wish they didn't make you compete for the three... Like, I wish you could use all the cool abilities in this game without losing Magic, Draw, and GF. Let's do this. Fortunately, it's going to be a level 90 something Omega weapon. It might make sense for me to just bring. Because I'm only really going to be doing realistic damage with uh, Squall. Although, I guess it wouldn't surprise me if um, this boss doesn't even scale with your level. He's just always level 100. So, never mind. I guess if I lose, I can try that for next time. I saw people complain about item taking a spot on Freelancers in 5, and this was their revenge. Yeah, it works for like one character when it's Gogo, -Go, which by the way, I probably played Final Fantasy VI a dozen times before I realized you could go in the status menu and give him any ability. I thought he just had Mimic. And I still used him because I thought he was a cool character. Game doesn't even really tell you, make you, give you any reason to suspect that he works that way. As to whether the boss scales or not, sure. It's a mean Resident Evil to like have an unskippable animation during the first ten seconds or so of this playing. He does scale in the remastered version, really. That's weird. In the original PS1, he was always level 100? Huh. So I guess if I lose to him this time, I can try him tomorrow, or next week, uh, with <laughs> Quistus and Selfie. So they can cast Aura once and then die. That bell's pretty hidden, too, on top of all this. Oh shit, no, no! Time's still running! Lock in San Dimas! Is it possible to get there on the path I took, or is there meant to be like a shortcut that I used to get there faster from one of the doors that I opened? I made a couple mistakes on my way there. half the health he'd have at 90. Alright, well, I mean, health is the main thing blocking us.
Oh, put the main party at the switch point by the fountain. That's... Those are shenanigans. I like it. It looks like there's just enough time to get there, but that must be the easier way to do it. I'm guessing his damage doesn't change terribly much regardless. Which one of them has encountered him? That's the only one I need to switch here. Selfie for Zell, please. Sure, I switch him back. Oh, there's a little party switcher right there. That's nice. The timer doesn't get affected by that. Oh, that's kind of cheesy. Oops. The timer's still moving when I'm in that menu junctioning. What's up, buddy? How are you? Oh. Do you... What's happening? There he goes. Why are you not fighting me? What's happening? Guess aura on himself. Should be doing there. Itty bitty hitbox. Oh, he can't cast it on himself. No! <laughs> I already fucked this up. Oh, and he cast level 5 death, which I assume ignores. Maybe squalls of multiple of 5. I have to cast aura first. Because, uh, Holy War makes him immune to everything, so I can't cast Aura. That's so stupid. <laughs> Alright, well, that'll give me more to do next episode. Now I know. <laughs> I think it does wear off eventually. <laughs> I do not remember that being a thing at all. That it worked that way. It does have all the good spells. Alright. Well, um, future Marstead, make sure you cast Aura on Squall before using a Holy War. Otherwise, you're gonna be Sad Panda. And I guess top everyone off, too. Over here, I guess I can try really quick before we sign off. Probably still gonna lose. And you can still die in here if your holy war wears off at a really inopportune time.
Does it make them immune to all spells, including like cure? No, not faded circle, the other one. I'm guessing Mighty Guard won't work either. Let's see if there's any other fact finding I should do. Blocks every effect. Okay. Oh, hey, Gilgamesh is showing up. <laughs> Gilgamesh one hit kill Omega weapon? Because that would be hilarious. I also don't remember that Gilgamesh can spawn during the fight. I thought it was only at the start of the fight, like Odin. Excalipur. He hits for one. Bummer. It looks like it didn't work on Renoa. There's an attack, Terra Break. Separate from Zantet or Zantetsuken. It's gonna take me a while to correct that. I've said Zantetsuken for so long. Is there like a extremely rare chance for that to roll or something? Is it rolling for uh, Gilgamesh every turn? Lionheart here. Stop it! Use the good one. Stop using the sucky one. Psycho Survey Battle has a chance of causing Gilgamesh, but it can only be called once per battle. I see. Oh, I think Aura wore off before. Holy War didn't. It could easily kill me if the timing is bad. You probably still want Squall to be low on health, just in case. That shit. Try Zell. It can't. Doesn't Zell have some shenanigans where you can just like max his strength as much as possible, and then just keep doing the really fast attacks, like mash the inputs for it over and over. I, mean, I feel like I have done that before. I'm just not getting lucky with rolling Lionheart here. I'm guessing part of it is that Squalls only has a chance to do a finisher and it's based on his crisis level, which isn't very high right now. Zero point zero five seconds. How many hits does that work out to if you do it perfectly? Pillar shit. Ultimate weapons one shot. God, I gotta get his health lower. This is annoying. No! Still gonna fast forward this attack. The animation is so long. Oh, 
just some sort of start of time. Yeah, I was just curious what was possible. Next time is as limited as eight seconds. Sure, no, 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 I wouldn't do it perfectly. I'm just curious how it compares to Lionheart. Wait, seriously? Oh my god, I beat him without even using Lionheart? How embarrassing, Omega Weapon. I thought we were going to be in this fight for another 20 minutes. I was getting ready to apologize to my wife. Well, there you go. That's the FF8 Super Boss. He's an embarrassment to Emerald Weapon. Omega Destroyed, Achievement Unlocked. I love how three stars is made out to be this insanely cool ability. Like, expend three minus one sounds cool? Um, from like a, you're like writing out how the abilities are going to work on paper, but then it turns out that triple kind of sucks. It takes you two turns to set up triple, and then the magic you expend isn't that big of a deal. Use potion on him? What's that? I thought you're, the cheese you were going to mention was using Zell. Whenever you use a potion on him, it resets his ATV. <laughs> That's so goofy. I love it. Alright, and I think I got... Uh, Aki was talking about this, right? Proof of Omega. Congratulations, you defeated the world's strongest monster, Omega Weapon, in Ultimisha Castle. You are the finest fighter in the world. Double exclamation mark at the bottom. Show that to your friends when they come over and look at your memory card. Okay, yeah, I think we probably saved 15 minutes by bringing Quistus and Selfie along for the level scaling effect. It would have just taken twice as long. Thanks folks for hanging out. We'll finish up Final Fantasy VIII next week, which is know what's coming up here.